So we just did our simplifying by factoring and I wanna write that strategy right here. Factor, there's two forms. Uh, let's see, the first form, we got conjugates written down. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that here. The other common form we saw on some of these examples we did So you factor, whoa, 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 that is a C, there we go. So you can either, there's something in common, you'll notice that by looking. Uh, you may not be used to looking for difference of squares or conjugate pairs. That is something you wanna get more familiar with. So now we're gonna do examples that will be more similar to what you're gonna see on your exam, your midterm. Uh, and these are where we're going to start with an identity, a true statement for all input value, for all variable values. But what we're going to do is sh uh, show why it is true. So in this question, it, what you're supposed to do is prove the identity. So the identity we're gonna start with Cos over one minus sine equals one minus sine over cos. All right, so how do we prove the identity? That is where our last, oh, there's actually one more strategy. So I'll leave space for number four. Uh, number five, begin on complicated side. So we're gonna begin on the complicated side. <clears throat> Some questions that's gonna be more obvious than others. Which side is more complicated? They're both pretty much the same. I'm gonna go ahead and say the left side looks a little more complicated because in my opinion, fractions that have simpler denominators uh, I like. So one minus sine x, that's not quite so simple. So what I'm gonna do is leave uh, this here. So we're gonna begin, oh, sorry, that's the complicated side. So we're gonna start there. Um, begin on com. Side, which we'll say is the left right there. All right, we have our uh, strategies, the one that I skipped, and we're gonna use it right away, so I better write it down. Multiply by conjugate. Be illegal to just multiply by a conjugate, but if we multiply by a conjugate over itself, uh, you're gonna multiply by one. All right, so multiply by conjugate over conjugate. So that's a strategy. Uh, so we began on the complicated side. Now we're gonna multiply. So conjugate of what? Well, there's only one thing here that can make a conjugate and it's the dom denominator, one minus sine x. So what is the conjugate of one minus sine x? So the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. And likewise, the conjugate a minus b is a plus b. So you're just gonna pair it up with the other one all right, so that's what conjugates are. Let's go ahead and get back to here. So in this problem, I'm gonna multiply by one
And the version of one I'm multiplied by is one plus sine x divided by one plus sine x. So why am I doing that? That's not clear to you yet. Or at least that shouldn't be necessarily clear to you at this moment. When you multiply by conjugate, I recommend in these identities that you multiply, we're really foiling here. So we're gonna go first F O I L. There we go, foil. What I am not gonna do is distribute across the top because they're not conjugates. And I've done enough problems that uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and do it now. So we'll distribute cosine into both of these. Cos x times one is cos x plus cos x sine x. All right, if you don't do it on purpose, or if you don't make the mistake, you won't see why it is a mistake. So I'm gonna make the mistake on purpose here. One minus, uh, one times one is one. So here's where outside inside terms cancel, we have plus sine x minus sine x cancels. And this is minus sine x. I'm going to write it as minus sine x squared. All right, one minus sine x squared. Hmm, what can we do with this? Well, let's look way back to all of our identities. I could scroll way uh, up to the top of this page, but the one I'm gonna use is a very common one. It's one that you should have memorized. And what we're gonna do, I see one minus sine squared x right here. So what I wanna do is solve for one minus sine squared x. Well, how do I do that? Well, I subtract sine squared x from both sides. And cos squared x is the same thing as one minus sine squared x. Now I can replace that one minus sine squared x with cos squared x. Now, if you're like me and you don't necessarily plan out your writing, or if you write kind of big, I'm intentionally writing big on this paper so that uh, it's easier to read, uh, depending, especially if you're on a smaller screen, but you can have things run into each other. So I've partitioned right up here. I wouldn't normally write this in a problem, what conjugate means, but these are notes. Uh, so I'm just writing down what conjugates are right here. And I'm doing my identity here. These are the uh, identities I used. Well, only one identity in this problem. So I use the identity here. And then if you look in the main area right here, just think about going, you know, you're doing algebra going downwards. So as I read, it should read step by step by step by step. You do not necessarily have to keep around these right here. And of course, all this talking, let's get back to algebra. Uh, cos x sine x, well, my sine squared. So now we're using that identity on the left. One minus sine squared is cosine squared. All right. And, oh man, we're still not there. We're beginning on the complicated side and you wanna end here. So we know what the, in some sense, you can consider this the answer, uh, but it's really more of a destination and we have to uh, keep doing algebra until we eventually get there. Now the problem is if you make an algebra mistake, it may not be entirely obvious. So I recommend just practice, practice on these. All right, so what can we do next? Oh, factor, cos, cos, I see that. Let's factor that out. Now we can make some cancellation. Cosine cancels cosine squared. There's a few ways to write this. <clears throat> the way I recommend you do it is what's really gonna be 
changed in the denominator. This is cosine times cosine. So if we go to our slightly better notation, this is cosine squared. So this cosine is going to cancel, but it doesn't completely cancel that term out. It's going to drop the power so it goes from 2 down to 1. So that's how I denote what's happening here. Make sure that <clears throat> on top you write extra bold. The new number is going to be right there. And now on the next one down, uh, we have 1 plus sine x over that single cos that was left. And splitting the fraction up. 1 over cos, secant sine over cos, tangent. Oh, I think I ran right past the finish line. <laughs> I was going for a simplify, which is not the instruction. The instruction was stop at 1 minus sine over cos. Oh, no. Hmm. That's not good. I have 1 plus sine over cos. So I'm looking here, and these steps are not going the wrong direction there. Uh, I'm really close to the destination. I just have a plus where I should have a minus. So let's get to the bottom of this. Hmm, minus. So I do not see a mistake here. I think the problem is in my notes. I think my notes are wrong. I believe this needs to be a plus. All right, so this is not something that <clears throat> you're allowed to do on a problem that I give you. Uh, if it does seem like this, uh, that the, that the uh, end result is not um, reachable or you get there and something is just off by a minus sign most likely that's in your work uh, i think my notes are just wrong i'm gonna correct them right now so you want to just be mindful of that so now one plus sine x over cos x my x's started looking like v's there we go so that's our final answer All right, next up, we're going to, so on this instruction, establish the identity so right away, I can see even odd properties are going to come into play. Negative signs are tricky. They mean two different things. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Let's first of all begin on complicated side. Should be pretty obvious, left side. So, and easy. Ah, there we go. That's easier, way easier to write down. This is the easy side. All right. Much better than misspelling complicated. Even odd properties. But before we do that, let's go ahead and rewrite in. Uh, hmm. You know, let's get extra fancy. I see something. So my favorite 
f word, we're gonna factor right here. I see sine squared minus cos squared. So this is oops, sine squared, so it's sine negative theta plus cos negative theta. I don't think I've ever solved it this way before. Uh, I'm just gonna copy next, the bottom here. Now when I said minus means two different things, what I mean is this means add the negative, whereas this one doesn't mean add negative. It means make the value of theta negative. So there is a, this is not multiplication, this is subtraction in the denominator. All right, well, let's get fancy with cancellation. Look at that, completely canceling. Remember, it's the exact same thing that I crossed out. You wanna make sure, for example, it would have been incorrect to cross out this one because there's a plus. So I'm just going to I'm trying to do just one step at a time because if I make a mistake, it's easier if you do one step at a time. Uh, if you make a mistake, there's less uh, places, uh, chances of error, basically. All right, so we're going to use even odd properties now. Most of these functions are odd. The One of the few exceptions is cosine is even. So I'm going to write that even odd. All right, so what are the implications? Odd has an odd behavior, meaning you can pull the negative through the sine function. Cosine doesn't care about the negative. And I like to put positives first, negative second. Hopefully, that's where we're supposed to be going. And there we go. So I will show you a Another strategy, although I won't write it down because it's sort of cheating, um, but it's cheating and then covering your tracks. Um, so there we go. Just knocked out that identity. Another option, there are, there's really an infinite number of correct ways to get to the end. Um, as long as you're doing algebra correctly, uh, you will have an equivalent statement and eventually you should get to the end, the easier side. I could have used the even odd properties right away. Just looking up here, just use those four even odd properties. And you have to be a little careful because I'm squaring here. But I could have used even odd properties first, got rid of the negative signs, and then did a bunch of other algebra on these. Um, there are other ways to do it, I'm sure, too. Sine squared, unfortunately, sine squared minus cos squared is not equal to one, so that nice little uh, trick, the nice little identity doesn't quite work, but you can. Uh, for example, we saw cos squared is one minus sine squared, so you could replace that by one minus sine squared uh, of negative theta. So there are infinite, really an infinite number of correct ways to get to the uh, end. All right, our next problem. Show that. All right, so we need to show this identity here. It's pretty obvious what the complicated side is. And so this would be the easy side. I've drawn better boxes. Easy. So that's our end. All right, so we're going to start on the left side here. And I am going to cheat on this one. And what I'm going to do, I'll do this in the blue marker. And I'll come back at the end and erase all this stuff. Now. I know the last step here 
because everything's in sines and cosines on the left, the last step is probably two times one over sine theta, which of course is two over sine theta. Okay, so that's probably, so that's an alternative for the end, uh, the end step. Now, we're gonna come back and erase that at the, at the actual end of this problem. All right, well, we got some choices to make. What do we wanna do? We're starting on the complicated side, definitely. Right in terms of sines and cosines, it's already there. Uh, I could add fractions, unfortunately, common denominator, nothing in common, so I'm gonna have to go with just multiplying by the other denominator. Uh, let's see, I could multiply by conjugate over conjugate. That could definitely work. Um, what else? So there's really an infinite number of ways to do it. I think I just, let's see, we just factored, we did conjugate factoring, all right. We multiply by conjugate over conjugate here. So let's not do that move, let's go uh, add fractions of the common denominator. So nothing in common. Now here, I'm picking the other fractions denominator. All right, so this looks very coincidental. So on the left, we got sine times sine, sine squared. Now there's really nothing in common here. No reason to multiply the denominator together. I say that because cosine times sine is nothing special. Uh, cosine divided by sine, different story. Uh, but cosine times sine is not special. So I'm going to not distribute here. Um, another hint at the very end, one of the reasons I cheated, we look over here where we think we're gonna be going, and I see a sine theta in the denominator, so another really good reason to not get rid of sine theta. All right, sine squared. Over here we got a foil, now we have to foil for real. These are not conjugates, so unfortunately, I'm gonna do the four multiplications, so we got one squared is one. We got cos theta plus cos theta. This is outside inside. Two cos theta plus cos squared theta. All right, that's the uh, last two terms multiplied together. Uh, so this is the super common algebra formula. It's probably not worth writing down. A plus B. A plus B, not exciting at all. So there we go. Seen that plenty of times. Just as the outside inside terms uh, are the same. Okay. What's going on here? Let's see what we can do. Sine squared plus cosine squared. What is that? turn into, well, remember sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So I'll write that down. We got some identity space right over here. So that means I can replace what I circled by the number one. So on the next line, it's gonna look like one plus one plus two cos theta, all right, one plus one is two, easy. All right, what can I factor here? Well, two and two, so I'll factor a two out, and One plus cos, one plus cos, nice. Cancel, cancel, these are canceling to one. Oh, use the highlighter. 
canceling to one, and we got two over sine theta, which of course we know. I was about to write cosine, that is not correct. All right, two cosecant theta. Okay, so up here I, in the blue marker, I went backwards basically. I start at the end. You, If you've done enough mazes in your life, the, the silly mazes drawn out, you've probably started at the end and worked your way back a little bit at least. Uh, so that's all we're doing here. And just like in your when you write your final draft or English paper, you can if you want to erase this. Usually, uh, what I recommend doing is cross it out. Here's the reason. Well, there's two reasons. Um, if you erase it, I can still read what you wrote, so you're not hiding it. Uh, but another reason, if you, uh, it's not incorrect, you just want to kind of hide it away. So I would go ahead and leave it there. I would give you partial credit if I saw some correct things happening here, but for some reason there was maybe uh, a disconnect and you couldn't get from you know this line to the next line. Uh, so I would write, leave more written down rather than less. And we're gonna do two more. So this is a sixth strategy that I didn't write down. Uh, it's basically, you can start at the end and work backwards. Uh, here is a very, very good example of why uh, the beginning on the easier side is actually more difficult. How would you know uh, to multiply by one plus cos uh, divided by one plus cos? So the move to go upwards is this. And how would you know to multiply by that? That's a very good question. Um, and if you look at these in reverse order, I would say they're not obvious. You know, going up to here, well, what happens? Uh, after you multiply by this random thing, uh, then you distribute your two, then turn your two into one plus one, so you can turn the one into sine squared plus cos squared. Uh, these are a sequence of very not obvious moves, uh, which is the reason that we do not generally do not recommend going from the easy to the difficult side. If you're up for a serious challenge, you can do it. Um, I recommend against it, though. All right, our last two. Got to be very careful when you write this down. Then if you make a mistake, uh, very likely you're not going to actually have written an identity. So I'm taking a little extra care and time to be sure I don't flip a negative sign or write, um, you know, cosecant instead of cosine. Good time to stop talking. Tangent equals one. Oh, that's very simple. Tangent plus cotangent divided by secant times cosecant. All right. Well, easy side's the right side. Now, if you wanted to cheat here, the only thing I can really think of, maybe writing it as sine squared plus cos squared, or if you go way, 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 way up, the other Pythagorean identities you can solve for one. So you can solve for one right here. In fact, that might be the right one to solve for. So one is secant squared minus tangent squared, or you could solve for the one here and get that one is cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. So those are some other ways you can solve for one. But let's, I recommend you use that extra strategy when you're stuck. Uh, it's not a good a good thing to go to first. Generally, you'll be able to knock these out without trying to have uh, without going backwards. So, what can we do first? There's a, a few things to do. Right in terms of sines and cosines, well, because everything's tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. So that'd be a good move. The only bad thing about that we're going to have fractions of fractions, so we'll have to multiply by the reciprocals. Um, although I, I'll show you a trick, so you don't always have to do that. 
The other option is multiply by conjugate over conjugate. Conjugate of what? There's only one thing that could have a conjugate here, and it is tangent minus cotangent. The conjugate is tangent, uh, the conjugate of what's written is tangent t minus cotangent t. Uh, I don't want to get into square powers, so let's go ahead and write this in terms of sines and cosines. Um, when in doubt, I think that's a really good first move to make. The only drawback is you're generally going to get extra fractions, but that's okay. We'll deal with them carefully. Tangent is sine over cos. Cotangent is cos over sine. Divided by secant 1 over cos. Cosecant 1 over sine. All right. So we just rewrote in terms of sines and cosines. Of course, now we have multi-story fraction. So there, we could multiply by the reciprocals of both of the denominators. Uh, but another thing we could do is multiply by 1. The version of 1 I'm going to multiply by is this version. All right, so why am I doing this? Well, you distribute the denominator. Well, you're actually not distributing. You're just and you're just multiplying it by the one thing here. Uh, the numerator, however, you are distributing because, now it looks like things are similar, but this plus acts very differently than the invisible multiplication sign in the denominator. So that plus is the reason that we distribute on the, on the numerator. And let's go ahead and do that. Why did I choose to multiply by this? Well, there's a few reasons. One of them is because it equals one. So it's equal to the line above it. I multiplied by one. The other reason is, what well, it's gonna, it's gonna annihilate the no denominator. Cos divided by cos cancels. Sine divided by sine cancels, canceling all to one. All right, numerator. So we got sine divided by cos times cos, so the coses cancel. And we're gonna have sine squared t. cosine t divided by sine t, multiply by cosine times sine, so you're gonna get cos times cos, and then your sine divided by sine is gonna cancel out there, so that'll be cos squared t, and here we go. What is sine squared plus cos squared? That should be familiar now. One over one, which equals one. That is our uh, end, our easy end point where we wanted to get to. Now again, there are other ways. <clears throat> Could have multiplied by the uh, conjugate. We ended up having squares anyways, so it's not like we avoided getting into squared terms. Uh, so if you multiply by conjugate over conjugate, you'll get into squared terms right away, and then you use some of those identities, the Pythagorean identities up top. We use Pythagorean identity right here. Just happened to be the easy one, or at least the one that I can remember the easiest. So here's our last identity. Verify two cos squared theta minus one whole quantity squared divided by cos squared minus, nope, cos to the fourth. Minus sine to the fourth equals one minus two sine squared theta. So more complicated side, well, definitely a left is complicated. So we'll get to the right side eventually. So it's a little bit intimidating. It's very tempting to square, uh, to square the numerator. However, uh, that will give us four terms, all the outside inside terms will match. Uh, and I don't really wanna get into fourth powers if I don't have to. So what I'm gonna do instead is factor the denominator. Now it looks like it 
Doesn't look like a familiar form. However, I'm going to write this as cos squared theta squared. Because if you square and square again, that is, that'll be sine times sine times sine times sine or sine to the fourth power. All right, so all I'm doing right here, uh, the writing is very ugly near the edge of the screen. It's silly to write this out four times, but it should be, it should make it very obvious what's happening. So group them, group them. That's all I did right there. So it's sine times sine times sine times sine, and I grouped it up two and two, like that. So, all right, well, why am I doing this? Now we have difference of squares. Now, when things get a little more complicated like this, sometimes it's good to have a nice easy reference with easy letters. All I'm thinking about in the denominator right here, that's it. A squared minus B squared. I won't, uh, yeah, I did it. minus first, A minus B times a plus b, that's all I did. It turns out that a is co-squared and b is sine squared, which is strange. However, uh, just like in uh, Star Wars, there is no try, there's only do. So these are conjugates, cos to the fourth minus sine to the fourth. We wrote that as uh, co-squared squared minus sine squared squared, factored as conjugates just like this. So you can see cos squared right there, that's A, and then B right there. So it's exactly the same form that's written on the right side, just slightly more complicated letters. So you wanna make sure that your brain gets good at parsing these up. All right, so why is this good? There's one thing in here that's really nice cos squared plus sine squared is one. So that cancels itself. That's out, that the whole thing is one. All right, what to do next? So we got some cos squareds. I'm looking at the end right here. At the end, all we have is sine squared. So right here, well, I mean, we have a one minus two sine squared, but the trig function we have is sine or sine squared. So what I'm gonna do is take my cosine squareds. I'm gonna get rid of my cosine squareds uh, because I don't see any cosines in the end form right there. So how do I take cos squared and get rid of them? Well, that comes from the identity. Co squared plus sine squared equals one. And cos squared theta by itself, one minus sine squared theta. So we're gonna make this swap. We're gonna do this very carefully. Co squared. So I just put extra parentheses there. When I did my identity substitution, that entire cos squared became one minus sine squared. You should be able to see it pretty clearly with those extra parentheses. Denominator, it's a little easier to write this one. 
So we're not multiplying it by anything. All right. So this looks pretty ugly. Let's go ahead, distribute the two. So in the denominator, we're gonna have two minus sine squared theta minus one. Oop, two minus two sine squared theta. That seems important. And now my spacing is bad. We'll write right to left. Two plus minus, goodness, two minus minus one divided by one minus two sine squared theta. All right, we just got some constants. Two minus one is one minus two. One minus two. All right. Hmm. One. I don't think that's what's on the right side. No. <sighs> so that is not what's on the right side. I'm going to check my notes real quick. Make sure. Minus two. All right. And the original problem is correct. So let's backtrack. Now the question is, what's the best way to check? You know, if you don't get to the right thing at the end, well, certainly that's not correct, which definitely means that the next one's not correct. I'll check. You could check either way. Uh, I'll go backwards, basically. All right, so we got two minus one is one. So that looks okay. Oh, here we go. So what happened here? I completely forgot the fact that this was squared. The entire numerator is squared, which, so now I have the same thing, except in the numerator it's squared. So here's where I cancel and turn the two into a one. So this is what we're trying to get to. So these are really, really good algebra practice. You get to use pretty much all your algebra skills you used before. And in addition, all the trig identities. So this is the last example for the regular uh, identities. What we're gonna do next is sum and difference. And after that, let's see, we do product sum and then double and half angle. So we got quite a few more identities ahead.